Today, we are doing a complete beginner's guide to GitHub. Whether you're just starting out with coding or you're building your first portfolio project, learning how to use GitHub is essential. By the end of this video, you'll know how to create a GitHub account, use GitHub Copilot, upload your code, connect your local project to GitHub, use different branches and clone repositories. Let's dive right in. Hi. I'm Raphael, a passionate developer and computer science teacher. Here you will find coding vlogs, step-by-step -step tutorials and motivation to start programming and to stay on track. Maybe you're wondering, why do I even need GitHub? Isn't it just for experts or big teams? Well, that's exactly what I want to clear up today. Because there's the truth, GitHub is one of the most powerful tools you can learn right now and it can completely change the way you code, collaborate and grow as a developer. So why is GitHub so important? First, it's basically the world's largest platform for hosting code. Imagine a giant library, but instead of books, it holds millions of projects created by developers all around the globe. From small beginner projects to huge open source software used by millions, it's all on GitHub. But it's not just storage. GitHub helps you keep track of your code changes, which means you can experiment, fix mistakes and even rewind to earlier versions if something goes wrong. That's a total lifesaver, especially when you're learning. And here's the cool part. GitHub isn't just about code, it's about collaboration. You can work with others, preview code, suggest improvements and build amazing projects together no matter where you live. Having a GitHub profile where you share your projects is a great way to show future employers what you can do. It's like an interactive resume that speaks louder than words. You might have heard the name before, but maybe you're wondering, Git versus GitHub, what's the difference? In this part, we're going to clear up a question that confuses a lot of beginners. What's the difference between Git and GitHub. At first glance, the names sound similar and they're definitely related, but they're not the same thing. Knowing how they fit together is key to becoming a confident developer. So let's break it down. First off, Git is a version control system. Think of it as a tool that tracks every change you make to your code, kind of like the undo button on steroids. Imagine you're writing an essay in Google Doc. Every time you click save, Google keeps a history of your work, so you can go back to an earlier draft anytime. Git does the same thing, but for your code, and much more powerfully. Git runs locally on your computer. It records snapshots of your project files, lets you compare changes and helps you manage different versions without losing anything. It's especially useful because programming is an iterative process. You try things, sometimes break stuff, and then fix it. It keeps everything safe and you never lose your work. Now here's where it gets interesting. GitHub is a website, a cloud-based platform that hosts Git repositories online. Think of GitHub as the social network and storage locker for your Git projects. You push your local code to GitHub so it's backed up and you can access it from anywhere. But GitHub is more than just storage. It's built to help collaborate with other developers. You can share your code, work together on the same project, review each other's changes and discuss improvements all in one place. But why do you need both? So Git is the tool to use to track the changes on your own computer and GitHub is the platform where you store and share all the changes online. You can use Git without GitHub, for example, just on your local machine, but GitHub makes working with others and showcasing your projects way more easier. All right, let's walk through how to create your GitHub account step by step. Go to github.com. In the right corner, click on sign up. Enter your email address. Use a valid email address that you have access to. GitHub will use this to verify your account. Pick a secure password that's hard to guess. Choose your username. This will be part of your GitHub profile URL. So choose something you like, ideally related to your name or your coding identity. For example, code gainers tutorials. Before you can use your account, GitHub will send you a verification email. 
And that's it, your GitHub account is now ready to use. You now have access to the entire GitHub platform, where you can host projects, collaborate with others, and build your developer portfolio. Now that your GitHub account is set up, let's take a few minutes to get familiar with your interface. So let's walk through the key areas you'll use the most. At the top of the page, you'll see GitHub's main navigation menu, and it gives you quick access to all the important sections. Let's start from the left. The search bar. This is a very useful tool on GitHub. You can use it to search for code, repositories, users, or even specific lines of code inside a project. To quickly access the search bar, type S on your keyboard. Whether you're looking for a specific file, a piece of code, or a project someone built, GitHub search helps you find exactly what you need. Here you can search for repositories, users, organizations, issues, code snippets, or even specific commits. Let's take a deep dive into one of GitHub's most exciting features, GitHub Copilot. Copilot is GitHub's AI pair programmer. It can suggest code completions as you type. Clicking the icon gives you access to settings or the Copilot chat. You also have the option to download Copilot for your specific IDE or editor, like Visual Studio Code, Xcode, ChatBrains, or Neovim, even in your command line. It's often called an AI pair programmer, because it's like having a coding partner sitting beside you, ready to suggest ideas and solutions while you type. At its core, Copilot is a tool powered by advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning models, developed by OpenAI and GitHub. It's trained on a massive dataset of publicly available code from GitHub repositories along with other programming resources, which allows it to understand how developers typically write code. This training helps it predict what you might want to type next and suggest whole lines or even entire functions of code. As soon as you start typing, Copilot analyzes your code, the variables, the function names, the comments, what you're writing, and generate suggestions in real time. These suggestions can range from simple code completions to complex algorithms, helping you get past tricky problems or speeding up routine coding tasks. Now, how do you actually use Copilot? If you're using Visual Studio Code, GitHub offers a Copilot extension that you can install directly from the marketplace. Once it's installed and enabled, it starts working quietly in the background as you type. Speaking of Copilot Chat, this is a new and exciting feature that adds a conversational interface to your coding workflow. Let's try out a simple program in Python that checks a password. Instead of just getting code suggestions as you type, you can ask Copilot Chat questions, request explanations or get help debugging your code. All through a chat window integrated in your coding editor. For example, you could type something like explain what this function does or help me write a unit test for this module. And Copilot Chat will respond with helpful code snippets, explanations or suggestions. It's a powerful way not only to speed up coding, but also learn and understand your code better, especially if you're still getting comfortable with programming concepts. The next icon on the menu bar is the create new icon or the plus icon. Clicking the plus icon lets you quickly create something new. You'll see several options, new repository to start a brand new project, import repository to bring up a project from somewhere else, a new code space to launch a cloud-based coding environment, new gist to share code snippets or some small notes, and new organization to create a shared space for teams to collaborate on projects. The issues tab is like a task tracker. This icon shows issues you have created or are involved in across all repositories. It's your personal list, like a to-do or a bug tracker for everything you touch on GitHub. You can use it to report bugs, such as new features or ask questions about the project. A pull request is a way to propose changes to code, whether it's your own code or someone else. Next, you'll see the notifications. If someone mentions you, assigns you to an issue, comments on your pull request, you'll see it here. Finally, in the top right corner is your profile picture. 
Clicking it opens a drop-down menu with everything related to your account, your profile, your repositories, your projects, your stars, settings and sign out. This menu is your hub for navigating your personal content on GitHub. Alright, now that you're all set up, it's time to create your first repository. A repository or repo is basically a folder for your project, but stored online on GitHub. To create one, click the plus icon in the top right and choose New Repository. Give it a name, choose whether it's public or private. Now let's connect your local project folder to your GitHub repo and upload your code from your computer to GitHub. Go into the folder on your computer where your project lives. You can use the terminal. If your folder isn't already a Git project, you can run git init. This tells Git to start tracking changes in this folder. Stage everything you want to upload with git space add space dot. Then save a snapshot of your word, git commit minus m and a comment like initial comment or my first upload. You can write any message inside the quotes, something short that describes what you're uploading. To get access to GitHub and to a GitHub repo, you might use a token. Go to your profile to settings. Scroll down to developer settings. Then you can see personal access tokens. Go to tokens classic and generate a new token. To initiate a connection to your repo, use this token with this command. Make sure you use your username and the name of your repo. Paste in your token. Keep in mind that the token is only visible once and you shouldn't give it away to somebody else. And then push the code to GitHub. Run git push and minus u origin main. And that's it. Your project is now live on GitHub. You have connected your local folder, added files, made a commit and pushed it online. Now you can keep updating your code and every time you make changes, you'll just use git add, git commit and git push. It's like saving your work, but smarter. Let's talk about something even more powerful, branches. But what are branches? Think of a branch like a copy of your project, where you can try out new ideas without changing the main code, kind of like a separate workspace. The main branch is usually called main. When you create a new branch, you can safely make changes without affecting that main version. But why should you use branches? You can experiment safely. You can try out new features or fixes without breaking your main code. Team members can work on their own branches and then merge changes together later. In your terminal, you can create a new branch by typing git checkout minus b and the name, for example, new feature. This creates and switches to a branch named new feature. Now make your edits and save them with git add and git commit. Your changes stay only in this branch. The main code remains unchanged. To share your branch online, push it with git push and origin new feature. This uploads your branch to GitHub so others can see it. And now you have to merge them. When your changes on your branch, for example, new feature, are ready, you can merge them into the main branch like this. First switch to the main branch, git checkout main, then pull the latest changes from GitHub to make sure your main is up to date, git pull origin main. Now merge your feature to the main branch, git merge new feature. Finally, push the updated main branch back to GitHub with git push origin main. This will combine the changes from your new feature branch into main locally and then update the repo remotely. If you want to delete a branch, type in git push origin minus minus delete and the name of the branch. Now the branch has been deleted and you only see main. Let's say you found a project on GitHub you want to explore or contribute to. How do you get it onto your computer? That's where Git clone comes in. First, I had to change the visibility to public to get a clone of it. Afterwards, I will show you how to use a token to get access. Cloning a repo means downloading a full copy of the GitHub repo, including all the files, folders, commit history and branches onto your local machine. 
Here is how to clone a repo. Go to the repo you want to clone on GitHub. Click the green code button. Under clone, copy the URL. Navigate to the folder where you want to place the project. For example, change directory and the path to your folder. And then use git clone and the URL. Replace the URL with the one you copied. This will create a new folder and download the entire repo into it. If you want to clone a private repository, you can use a token, git clone, and then the token at github.com, followed by the username and the name of the repository. You now know how to clone any repo on GitHub, explore it locally and even contribute. Whether you're learning from someone else's code or joining a team, git clone is your entry point. Try it out. Clone one of your own repos or a cool open source project and start exploring. You want to contribute? Let's say you find a cool project on GitHub and you want to help out, fix a bug or add a new feature. Here's the beginner-friendly way to contribute using something called a fork. Step 1. Fork the repo. Click the fork button at the top of the repo page. This makes a copy of the project under your own GitHub account. Clone your fork. Download your copy to your computer with git clone. Open the project in your code editor and add your fix or your feature. Create a branch where you'll make all the changes, with git checkout and then my changes. Save your work, then upload it to your fork on GitHub by using git add, git commit and git push. Go to your GitHub fork and click compare and pull request. This lets the original project owner review your changes and, if everything looks good, merge them into the main project. And that's it. You have just contributed to an open source project, even as a beginner. Fork, clone, edit, push and pull request. Simple steps, powerful impact. But what's a pull request? When you make changes to a project, like fixing a bug or adding a feature, you don't send someone a message saying, hey, I changed your code. Instead, use a pull request, or PR for short. A pull request is something like, hey, I made some improvements to your project. Here's exactly what I changed. Would you like to add it to your project? And it's called pull request because you're asking the original project owner to pull your changes into their code. You are not forcing changes on them. You're politely requesting, please review my code and pull it into your project if you like. Thanks for watching. You've just taken a big step by learning how to use GitHub and version control, skills every developer needs. Now it's your turn to practice, create your own repo, try making commits, push your code and experiment with branches. The more you use Git and GitHub, the easier it gets. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials and tips.